they saved the oldest for the last, so uh, thanks for having me here. Um, it's, it's great to be in a room full of so much energy and passion and courage. Uh, and so I, I love that, uh, that last uh, talk because I think it is, it is absolutely right that we need to be courageous and bold and not be afraid of change. Um, so tonight what I'm going to do, because I've lived a long and storied past in this healthcare system in Ontario, I'm going to talk about why I think we have so much trouble scaling and sustaining innovation in our healthcare system. This is a huge problem. Uh, we have great ideas, we have great technological advances, uh, and yet we still have so much difficulty in this country and in hospitals and in healthcare uh, provider organizations to actually you know, build on that momentum and, and sustain that change through, through the great, for example, digital health um, innovations that we have represented in this room. So as we know, Canada is the land of pilot projects, right? How many times have we heard that? We have no shortage of really great innovative ideas um, and people who work incredibly hard to try and make those ideas come to fruition. Uh, but we are notoriously challenged to scale those innovations. And you know, especially in the field that I work in, in digital health, uh, you know, we support new models of care, we try new uh, ways of doing virtual care, automated um, processes to support care in different ways. Um, so I see this every day. Um, and as somebody who's worked in the system for a really long time, I'm a former hospital CIO in these hallowed halls um, here, as a matter of fact, at UHN, and I've worked in this field as trying to drive pilots, drive innovation, and large-scale transformation. I can tell you from you know, first-hand experience, this is hard stuff, but let me just describe sort of the typical, the typical uh, scenario of a pilot project and see if this resonates with you guys. So, you know, they all kind of follow the same pattern. Essentially, they start out, somebody starts out with this awesome idea about some innovative technology or an app or just some new feature of something that we hadn't tried before, technology speaking. Somebody's got initial one-time funding or a researcher or a grant or maybe the hospital's got some sort of, uh, you know, pot of, pot of funding available or the provider organization. Project teams formed, super engaged clinicians get excited and they start to sponsor the initiative. Uh, you know, a small group of patients gets enrolled in a project, and we even can evaluate and show impact, successful impact from the, from the uh, benefits of this technological advancement. But then what happens? Things start to peter out. So we get clinician, the clinician champions get busy. Um, we can't find the energy to continue enro enrolling patients. Um, the money runs out. Uh, the pilot lumps along and eventually people just become distracted and they lose momentum. So what is the problem? <clears throat> so I guess the question is, why does this happen so repeatedly? And I have a hypothesis. I would suggest that we don't put nearly as much energy into sustaining and operationalizing change and transformation as we do behind the energy that we put into the initial pilot project. Um, and so I have some thoughts on why that is. Um, I actually think that we are culturally programmed in this country, in our public health care system, to deliver on short-term benefits and not focus on long-term gain. And I would say, uh, and I'm not trying to be political in any way, but I would say that this is largely driven because we're a public health care system, we are driven by political cycles and election cycles and annual budgets. And so all of that momentum forces us to focus on short-term benefit without thinking about the longer-term sustainment and operationalization requirements. And I would, also <laughs> I would also say that we don't apply uh, business thinking. So companies, and you, you guys represent, you know, a large group of you represent private sector. You think about growth strategy every day. You think about all of the things that you need to have in your organizations to not only put a, you know, take a product or a service to market, but what it's going to take to actually grow that, that business over time. Guess what? Public sector healthcare does not think about change in the same way. So, what do we do to change that pattern in order to successfully sustain and scale transformation and inf innovation in our, in our industry? So first of all, I think if we expect innovation to scale, we need to start thinking differently about change and thinking transformationally. Um, about, that means changing the way we actually work, not just piling more stuff onto clinicians, more stuff onto the staff who work in healthcare provider organizations, but we need to think about how the transform or how the, the change in technology or in innovation is fundamentally going to change the way we work uh, before we even start the project. 
I would say we also need to consider to be prepared to think about the operational supports. And this is somebody from, you know, a former hospital CIO who's lived and breathed this stuff day in and day out for years. We need to think about the required operational supports that have to be put in place at the time at which the pilot project is starting. So how many times have I seen a great project start, we get to the end, we have great outcomes, and then guess what? Now everybody dis disappears when we need operational budget, we need you know, a data center to throw a piece of uh, technology into, and an operational team to actually hold you know, and carry the ball. Um, and I would say that if we can't think about how innovation will change the way we need to start working before we actually undertake the initial pilot to start with, it's doomed for failure from the beginning. Because as I said, you can't just pile more new work on top of the old work. We have to actually change the way we work before we entertain a new change. Um, so how to sustain and scale. Okay, so this is kind of um, taken from a, a, a case study of an organization. I won't say who it is, um, but this was an organization that uh, we've worked with before uh, when they were trying to pilot a new patient portal. Okay, and essentially the, the moral of the story that I'm going to jump to because I only have 41 seconds left is that what I would say to you is that we need to think about connecting the front office processes, these are the interactions directly with our patients, to everything that's happening within the operations of an organization, all the way into the back end and the back office systems and processes, and all of that has to align to actually be supporting the innovation. So I'm gonna walk through this case study super quick. Um, so this organization was trying to implement a patient portal. They started with a little bit of seed funding. They got um, money from, uh, from an outside funder to support this. So there are a few things that I would say have to be put in place. So first off, you know, is the use in this case of the technology actually embedded as a standing part of the service delivery program? And if it's not, you know, it's gonna be forever isolated as sort of a one-off thing. And what this organization did was they made sure that every single patient coming into every single clinic across um, the organization was informed about the portal and how they should access it. Um, clinicians were incented, needed to be incented to use the technology and they actually built this into the way that uh, clinicians were evaluated uh, at the organization and they actually had doctors, training doctors on how to use the portal with their patients. Um, they also had to formalize business teams embedding this into um, sort of the, the overall, what they needed a business team to embed this into the overall responsibility of the hospital. And in this particular case, the patient relations department, not the IT department, but the patient relations department actually took ownership for the stewardship of the portal on an ongoing basis. Um, they measured this thing on an ongoing basis and they also tracked how many patients they were enrolling and they set very specific goals and milestones for themselves and they tracked it at the senior management table. Um, and then last but not least, they had very formal processes to operationalize the technology from a technical support perspective. So they actually stood up an entire operational team in IT that was responsible for managing the portal over time. So, so what I'm trying to say is it's not just, you know, cool tech um, and a bunch of really keen clinicians to start with and maybe a few patients to get it going, but it's actually to embed this into the overall organization and, and truly, you know, integrate uh, all of the processes front, middle, and back in order to support technology and innovation. And I really think that that's the only way if organizations think so all of the beautiful technology that your organizations are supporting and building, um, if you wanna actually grow your business over time, you need to start asking your customers, the healthcare provider organizations, whether they're fully prepared to engage in that. And then if they are, then, then sign the contract. Thank you.